So the irony is, and the question I have is, if we know country music is so heavily influenced by the roots and culture of black music, why don't I see me more often? On my way to Memphis, but I feel like coming home to Emily. Why country music? Because it is who I am. I am a proud Nova Scotianer, and I grew up always listening to country music. As much as I listened to blues and jazz and soul and that was always playing, my father was a die-hard country music fan and so I grew up listening to Charlie Pride because he was the only black person I saw. My father was always pointing him out to me and showing this is what you get soul out of in country music and so I see of course a black person singing country but I don't see anybody else. So as much as I love the jazz and the blues and the funk that was heavily influenced growing up with me in the 70s. I was listening to Dolly Parton. I was listening to Joni Mitchell. And I was always watching Anne Murray. Talk about the Canadian songbird being an influence on you. She was a star to me. And I would listen to her and I would go, I sing like her. I, I think I sing like her. I'm this little kid going, spread your tiny wings. And I'm going, I kind of sound like her but I never saw myself, I never saw me as an identity on television. And I would sit there and think about singing Anne Murray songs mm -hmm. and go, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I was on Sing Along Jubilee and if I could get everyone to close their eyes, they'd think I was Anne Murray. So I already have this feeling of like, I'm not seen, so I shouldn't be acknowledged. And that's a really crazy thing to feel as a young black woman. And I think at this stage in my life, I don't want to think that way anymore. Seems like it was really important for you, though, to make this album. Like it was oh, yeah. something that you've been that's been building up inside of you. It was and, huge. and you had to let it out. It was huge. And everything came at the right time, meeting Stella at the right time, us collaborating with Timbo Vacanti at the right time. It is come full circle that Everything that I'm touching on is allowing me to actually acknowledge my roots and my history. This country music album that has so many elements in it that are definitions of country is part of who I am. And I'm also working on a project related to Afro Metis work. And because my roots are also indigenous, I also have indigenous lineage in Nova Scotia. Again, not acknowledged. And again, I'm doing work and celebrating that history because we've been here long in the tooth and we need to be recognized and acknowledged for that and that rich history that we have. So I think for me, part of this music right now as we go into Black History Month is relevant because it is related just to who I am culturally. And it just so happens that it's at this time that I am bellowing about <laughs> it and letting people know more about the work and that that we're doing. I got my eyes on you. You're everything that I see, I want your hot love and emotion endlessly. You covered a Drake jam. I did. Hold on, we're going home, and one did. of my favorites. Why, why, why did you do that? Why? When I first heard that Drake song, I never heard it as a male singing it. I always heard it as a female singing it to a man and letting them have that place where they can feel like they can be themselves, and when they're home, they're in my arms. And I think a lot of men feel like that. And to hear a piece of music reversed that way so a guy can think, she's really speaking to me. I did it as a country song, but I also heard some elements that would feel soulful. So I did it with a reggae backbeat. And I think both elements together show the infusions of all those cultures always finding ways to meld together. And that is what I wanted to do with that piece. You're a real Canadian kid, man. I am a hardcore <laughs> a Canadian of kid. all our cultures. <laughs> Thanks for talking to us. That was fun. Thank you, Dory. Good luck with this album. Yeah, thank you.